Welcome to the Minute Masters, and this is part two of me rebuilding a Dana 44 TTB front suspension from scratch for my 4x4 swap in this truck. So in this video, we'll be covering spindle bearings, wheel studs, axle bearing, some seals on the Dana 44, and some other cool things like that guy right there. So let's get started. All right, guys, so it's time to replace the spindle bearing. So that's this bearing right here. So basically... Your axle comes right out, goes into the back of your spindle, and it rides around on that bearing. These actually look in pretty good shape, but I'm gonna replace them since I've got everything apart. I've already removed one. So this is actually what it looks like right here. This one's a Timkin brand. And that's kind of what it looks like when it's out. So a couple of different ways to remove these. Um, I've seen a lot of you guys will take a screwdriver that they've bent the tip on or a pry bar, stick it down there, and they'll try to catch the inner ledge there and knock it out that way. You can buy a three jaw gear puller, reverse the, the jaws, put them inside, spread them, and use a slide hammer to slide it out. The most typical way is with a pilot bearing puller. So this is a type, there's another one that fits on a slide hammer, but essentially what you'll do is you'll insert those down there. And honestly, the trickiest part with using this thing is just making sure you've got those two things spread apart and hooked under just right. Otherwise, you'll have multiple failed attempts getting them to latch and then of course stay put and then pull up. So I'm gonna get this set and then I'll bring you back just because it takes a little tinkering. All right, so I've got my spreaders set. So here's kind of what it will look like. I have this nut almost to the top of the crossbar right here to make this work. And then you just crank it down, that's why you know it's tight. And then you'll take a wrench, this one's a three quarter, and then you'll basically start to spin this nut. And you should notice that the bearing will start to pop up. So you'll see there's probably like an eighth inch gap or more from the top, and we'll just start wrenching. And there you have it, came right out. Time to put our new spindle bearing in and just good rule of thumb, match up the part numbers, make sure you're putting the same one back in. I like to grease the inside of the spindle with some grease. Uh, this is extra heavy duty, but you can use any axle or wheel bearing grease. And then you're just gonna set it right up here, nice and level. Now, if you have a race and bearing driver set. You can actually just put that there and tap it in. Otherwise, for the rest of us DIYers, you'll take your one and one eighth inch socket, which actually fits kind of just inside the overall diameter of the bearing, and then tap it into place. You'll know you get it set because it just reaches that point and it slides right in. There we go, and it just bottomed out. If you're curious, this is the five, three pound dead blow from Ulsa Tools, excellent tool to have. And here we go, fully installed. Looks really good. These bearings come pre-greased, so we don't have to do anything with them. Those are done, on to the next step. All right guys, so we have our hub here, and the only thing left to do is to attach the rotor and of course your wheel studs right back there. So the process is pretty straightforward. If this is the outside of your hub, instead of like traditional hubs where the rotor goes on this side, it actually goes on the back side. So basically go like that, line up your holes, and then you take your wheel studs and drop them in through the back. So I'm gonna drop all five through the back there. And then I'm just kind of just finger nudging them in. Now, if you have a press, go for it, press them in. If you're like me and you don't have a press, get yourself a punch and a hammer and you're basically just gonna whack them in just like so. Now, you can keep whacking them in until you close the space right here underneath. Now, I've done this once before and with just a hammer, at least this, you know, 20 ounce hammer, I couldn't get them to seat 
fully. So we'll cover that next. I'm gonna whack these in a little bit more and then I'll show you how I get them to snug up. All right guys, so as you can see, I've whacked the studs all the way through. And how you know you've got them pretty well whacked in is you see that part there with no threads. It actually starts to kind of curve out. When I see that popping above, that's when I know I can then move on to my next method of pulling them forward. So <clears throat> I have this little gizmo here, and as you can see, it's tapered for one of our acorn style lug nuts. And basically it has this uh, like bearing, so it spins. You put that there and you put your nut on and you essentially tighten it and that pulls the stud the rest of the way. Now, I advise against just taking an impact gun and going to town on it. I would say just get a big ratchet, start pulling it through and eventually you'll feel that there's no more slop. Now, I've been using a torque wrench and I think I've set it to like 50, 60 foot pounds and I found that that's kind of enough to get them seated. And then once the hub is on the truck and you go put your wheel back on, and you use a torque wrench and you do it to like 100 foot pounds, you should then have these pulled through pretty solid at that point. Because honestly, there's just no way to get any leverage on this to put even 80 foot pounds of torque on there. So I'm gonna go around and tighten them all through. So a quick troubleshooting tip for you guys. Like I said, try to avoid an impact gun when using these just so you don't strip any threads. So if you are true to that advice, you'll probably get to a point where you just can't get enough leverage on these things. And let's just say you really wanna get them set. So this one right here, I can tell isn't totally set. So I've tightened this thing on as best I can. And then if you go to the back side and just give it a good whack, a lot of times it will seat and look, it's loose again. So you could do that, tighten it, tap it from the back, tighten it, tap it from the back, and you could get these eventually fully seated. And then you don't have to worry about when you put your wheel on, letting it do all of the seating then. So keep that in mind if you're trying to get these set further. So before we move on to the next step, I just wanted to bring you back to a finished rotor install. So you'll just notice when you look at these, this portion of the lug stud where it flares out and then it's the knurling part that holds on to the hub. When that starts to stick up a certain amount, as you can see with these, that's how you know you're done. The other thing is you can also just give it a good shake. If you feel like there's no movement, you're good. Hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss any of this and the install is going to be even cooler. All right, guys, we're on to the final phase of the build. This is the Dana 44 third member and there's a few seals in here I want to change and one bearing. So the first one we want to tackle is this one right here. I've taken the liberty of removing it. So it's pressed in. It's kind of got a steel flange. And the best way to go about doing that is use a chisel, kind of get an edge. And then once you work an edge up, you'll be surprised how you can actually get it out with a pair of pliers and whatnot. So that's the first one out. All right, so the other seal is this one, okay? So it looks like this. Again, already taking the liberty of removing it. Pretty simple. I was actually able to get in there with my seal puller and actually pull it out. Um, you can use other methods. It really, really wasn't hard to get this one out. So then the next thing is this bearing. All right, guys, so to remove this bearing, you're pretty much gonna have a setup just like this. So what this is, is a slide hammer with a three prong jaw. This is the Aries Master Slide Hammer Puller Kit. I'll have a link down in the description. But anyway, you're gonna put that in there. You're gonna invert the hooks so that they grab that inside edge, okay? And as you can imagine, you're just gonna go to town using the slide hammer as it should. So I took a pause from slide hammering just to kind of show you my progress. So the bearing used to be seated 
roughly a quarter inch past this little uh, chamfer right here. So it's coming out, okay? So we're almost there. One side note, you'll notice all the actual round bearings are missing. Uh, that's because I didn't have this tool a couple weeks ago. And I tried doing this, you know, a hack job way and it didn't work. So that's my plug for spend the money, go rent the tool, do whatever, but you gotta do it this way. Cause honestly, I just don't know how you'd get this thing out. So I'm gonna get back to hammering. There we go. And that's how you do it, guys. So with our bearing out, it's time to put our new one in. So here's the new axle bearing. And real quick on orientation. So if you remember, here's the, the original one. And it was face up because these notches there that I broke. The lettering is on the underside. So I put the lettering face down. Uh, I took some grease. Grease the inside. Uh, again, I feel like it helps with install. And then position it right on top. You have your bearing, race, and driver setter right here. And I'm using a 59 millimeter. And I've got it turned upside down so it covers the whole piece. And then basically, we're going to start tapping. we go guys a fully installed axle bearing now before i close up shop on this one i'm just going to go in under there with a little pick and make sure it hit that little edge that's in there where it seats to and once i verified that it's time to put the seal on all right so the drill here is pretty similar get your seal put it right there on top get your driver Start pounding it in. So you'll notice as I was kind of hitting it in, it got a little off center. And that's usually where I start kind of pounding around the edge to kind of rewrite the seal. And right there, it's going in really well. Okay, there you go, guys. New bearing, new seal. All right, guys, so what we're looking at is the other side of the Dana 44. So I literally flipped this thing, did a 180, and now it's time to replace this seal. So it's got like a steel outer ring there right here. So it's actually pretty stiff. But anyway, same kind of drills before, line it up. I have an 81 millimeter driver. I'm going to put that right on top. I'm going to whammy it in. All done. Eat. So last little thing here, guys, this is kind of a bonus. I teased it earlier. It's a drain plug. So this does not come standard from the factory from Ford. It's something that I added uh, simply drilling and tapping for threads and then adding a brass plug to it. And now I can drain the fluid out of this 44 without having to unbolt the whole thing from the uh, TTB or using a siphon pump just get myself a nice L key, especially this wear a hex key right here. Take it out and we're good to go. And that's it guys. See you on the install.